So now let's go to the last topic and we'll look at the, the turnkey or the, the plug and play energy storage systems. So the, the term that is often used for this are the, are the stationary home ESS, so the energy storage systems. And they, they typically are used as a backup option or as we uh, mentioned before, you can also use it to enhance your solar self-consumption. Now these systems, they can come in many different shapes, sizes, colors. Uh, they can come under different brand names and they can definitely be priced very differently. Um, but most of the times they refer to somewhat the same thing. Um, so, for example, at the moment, the three biggest players in the market for the stationary home ESS are Tesla, that calls their system the Powerwall, you've got Enphase, that calls it the AC battery, or you've got LG, that calls it the home battery. Um, so there's different names, but most of the times they're referring to uh, somewhat of the same kind of system. Now, what I want to do is explain to you the basic operating principle of such a stationary home ESS. And so that you understand how system should work, which kind of components can be included. And then you can start shopping between all the different kinds of models and, and brands that are out there. So let's take a theoretical setup. Uh, you intend to install such a uh, stationary ESS in your house and you intend to install it in your garage. So you have the choice. You can go for uh, one unit, uh, which houses, you know, most of the times they use the lithium polymer kind of technology, the small batteries that also go in your phone. And that same technology they use for your energy storage system. And then sometimes they actually use just a lot of the small kind of battery types and all combine them together so that you get one large energy storage system. And then if you want, you can also extend your capacity by adding multiple of these storage units together. So it's just getting them all in normally in parallel. You normally wire them in parallel. So this is your energy storage system, your ESS. And just remember that at its very foundation, these systems, they work on DC, they work in direct current. So if somebody calls it an AC battery, for example, then it means that inside of the unit, there are the DC batteries. Batteries are always DC, but then it also houses the inverted charger, which turns the DC into AC. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go ahead again. So depending on which system you are looking at, it might already include certain components or it might just be the very foundation, just only batteries inside. So sometimes you would only have the energy storage system separately in one box and the other boxes then house the PV charger, for example. Um, that would facilitate the DC DC charging from your solar panels towards your energy storage system. You could also have the inverter separate from your energy storage system, whereby your inverter would take DC from your large battery packs and then turn it into AC. Or as you're charging your system, you would take your EC and turn it into DC. And then you could have, you know, ideal situation, you would have your vehicle, electric vehicle charger there as well that normally operates on the AC, so the AC output from your inverter charger. So we actually take the DC from the batteries, turns it into AC through the inverter charger, and then the electric vehicle charger would take the AC and turns it into DC in order to charge the batteries from the electric vehicle again. So there's a lot of AC to DC, uh, <laughs> AC to DC changes involved there. Um, so this would be a, a typical setup of how you could have it in your house and it really depends on which model you go for, whether the PV charger and inverter are already inside of the energy storage system housing or whether they are separate. Okay. So as you're looking at the different models, just analyze, okay, where are they all in one? Where do they come in separate boxes? And it just depends on what your preference is. Now, as you are shopping for these components, I have a few tips for you. Uh, there's so many values that you can find in the specification sheet and the brochures and in the manual, but a couple of values are in my opinion, directly important for you. So when you're looking at the PV charger, whether it's being separate or incorporated into the main housing, I think you should be interested in the, the capacity of the PV charger, which is normally expressed in either way, kilowatts or amperage. So the amount of capacity that the solar charger has to process solar power into battery power, so the maximum capacity. 
And the second value for the PV charger is the, the maximum input voltage for the PV charger. So the maximum DC input that can be fed from the solar panels towards the charger, which the higher that voltage is, a lot of advantages come with it, but normally you can wire a lot of panels in series, which bumps up the voltage and thereby, as a side effect, also decreases, the, in general, the energy losses during transport. So those are a couple of the values for the PV charger. When you're looking at the inverter functionality, again, whether it's in a separate box or whether it's already included in the main box, uh, you would definitely be interested in both the nominal and the peak output. So nom the nominal output is the amount of power that the inverter can supply if you would constantly draw this amount of power from it, so on a, on a non-stop basis. The peak output is applicable to uh, surges in the consumption. So for example, a heavy motor that starts up, um, a laundry machine, a dryer, or something that just kicks in once, an air conditioning has a normally a very high peak a peak demand so only for a few milliseconds or for a few seconds it would draw a lot of power so the peak output refers to the ability of the inverter to deal with these peaks and then normally they would also indicate for how long so both these two values are very important when you're analyzing a possible system for your setup then for the energy storage system so the, the actual battery storage of course you'll be interested in the capacity which is normally indicated in kilowatt hours but also in the cumulative amount of energy, right, that we discussed before when we're comparing the batteries. Now, for these kind, for the energy storage systems that you'll be looking at normally, the cumulative amount of electricity that you can withdraw from the batteries before the batteries need to be replaced is indicated in megawatt hours. So one megawatt hour equals 1,000 kilowatt hours. One kilowatt hour equals 1,000 watt hours, which means that one megawatt hour equals one million watt hours. So when you're looking into the warranty documents, you probably find a megawatt hour rating. Now the prices for these systems, they vary quite a bit, but you also have to keep in mind that when I'm giving you these prices, you need to be aware that if you're purchasing such a system, you're not only purchasing the batteries, but depending on which model you're going for, you also directly purchase the PV chargers, the solar charge controller, and the inverter charger, right? So the prices that I give you are for the complete set that includes all the other components as well. So the prices that you can find for this system at the moment are 20 to 30 cents per kilowatt hour of electricity discharge cumulative over the lifetime of the battery. That's a typical value that you can expect. So if you purchase such a system, you install it, and in theory, it would cost you 20 to 30 cents for every kilowatt hour that you will have discharged from the system before you need to replace it. So now you know what a plug and play turnkey energy is.